Hello everyone, I want to look at another game from uh, Magnus Carlsen uh, playing um, in the French defense. This uh, game is from 2012 um, from the final Masters tournament round one uh, with the white pieces. It was uh, Fabiano Caruana and this was a really long game so I want to pick it up at uh, move uh, 54. Um, and here is white to move uh, who was Caruana. And um, if you saw the last video I posted, which was another French defense played by Magnus with the black pieces against uh, Vasily Ivanchuk with the white pieces, I brought up the point that uh, Magnus is really good at outplaying his opponents from equal positions. And one of the things that he does really good is he's able to um, uh, always... It always seems that he has his pieces in superior positions uh, to uh, his opponent's pieces. Always just slightly uh, better. And he's always able to, uh, you know, just put enough pressure uh, on the opponent uh, this, uh, until they uh, crack in certain positions. So if you look here, right, this is the remnants of, a, a, you know, a French defense, you know, really... A uh, hard game. And we have move 54 here. Uh, if you count the pawns, you know each side uh, has uh, the same amount of uh, material here. Each side has um, uh, six pawns here. Excuse me. <laughs> uh, Black has seven pawns uh, to um, Fabiano's uh, six pawns here. But uh, if you notice, there's really no way at this point to um, realize that the black nature of the position is really like kind of dirty uh murky uh position right this pawn is backwards on b uh, h5 this pawn e6 is backwards so it's really hard to just uh say just push the pawn uh majority so to speak okay uh, we see uh white has ugly pawn structure with three separate pawn islands but when you look at the position, it's very, very hard to just directly attack anything due to the uh, closed uh, nature of the position. All right. And we also have another difficulty here if you're black, uh, if you're trying to win the game. And that is the opposite uh, color of bishops uh, on board, which tend to be uh, very uh, drawish here. So although Magnus um, has an advantage here, um, it's it's still a long ways uh, from winning okay so but what I do want to point out is how in this position Magnus with the black pieces um, has the slightly uh, better please piece position right notice how this bishop is very powerfully placed on e4 right but not I don't want to only mention that it's in the center but look it's putting pressure uh, on white's position and due to that pressure, right, on the C-pawn, white also always has to have a piece assigned to the protection of the C-pawn, all right? Which, right, is a demerit against that piece because this king doesn't have as much mobility, right, anymore because it has to protect this pawn. Same with this rook. If this rook is, say, stuck on C1 to free the king, then the rook loses a demerit as far as its uh, overall mobility and this is what I mean when they're putting pressure on the position um, white has to uh, limit um, his plans in order to deal with the weakness uh, in the position right although black is not able to capture he's able to uh, limit uh, whites uh, movements in the position and again when you do this enough okay eventually uh, tangible uh, weaknesses will form in the position. Another thing I would like to point out is look at this pawn on a3. Again, isolated and the rook is right there with pressure on it. Okay, so this poor king has to keep an eye on the c pawn and this pawn on the a file. All right, so now uh, we have to ask, well, how can we possibly improve from there? It's great you're putting pressure on the position. But what do we uh, do now? So let's follow uh, Magnus uh, through the next, and, and Caruana for that matter, through the next uh, phase of the game. So King D7, 
let's play bishop h4 king e8 king a2 and king a2 uh, is just exploiting the fact that this pawn is uh, temporarily undefended so Caruana would love to free up his pieces by just simply trading the A, uh, excuse me, the B pawn for the C pawn right here. Magnus will have none of that. He plays B6. However, he restricts the movement of his rook somewhat, but he's very content to leave it here, um, putting pressure on this uh, A pawn. Caruana has no choice but to go back and defend the C pawn now. King f7. And rook to e1. b5. Increasing the mobility of this rook now. If he wants to come out. Rook shuffles back. What else? King g6. Rook e1. And now king f7. And Magnus protects this e6 pawn. Right, perhaps he wants to be able to move this uh, bishop around. And a lot of maneuvering going on here. Rook b6, rook b1, king g6, king c1, rook a6 again, pressuring the pawn, king f5. So black has improved his king position somewhat. Rook b6. And here the only uh, viable plan seems to be is to engineer a breakthrough on the B file with moves like A5 followed up by B4. And we see Magnus lean in this direction. So A5, King C1. And now Bishop to G2. King to D2. And now you see the reason for the bishops moving to uh, G2 so the king can penetrate. Check. King f3. So you can see the rook is protecting this pawn here. The king has uh, penetrated. But again, um, how to really improve this situation. Rook e2. And there's the break, breakthrough b4. A takes. A takes. And now rook e3. Check. King f2. Rook e2. King f3. Of course, uh, Caruana would love to draw here. King f2, rook e2. And nope, Magnus uh, continues to play on. Rook e1 check, and now king h2. Again, notice the situation here. You have this light square bishop. is slightly better than this counterpart. This counterpart cannot move because then the uh, g pawn would be t uh, taken. And this is what I'm talking about is Magnus always finds a way to... Um, to kind of like handicap his opponent's uh, pieces somewhat. Conversely, we have Caruana now with a nice strong rook on this position as Black's position also has weakness. So Caruana is doing the same thing by pressuring this pawn on the e-file. It limits the scope of the uh, Black rook. C takes, and now rook takes, and instead of remaining passive, Carlson is obliged to trade the e6 pawn for the b pawn. And we can see that the material is even. Rook takes e6. Bishop e4 again from Carlson. And this move uh, is, uh, is very interesting because what Carlson is trying to do is basically block out the, um, block out the white pieces. Uh, from the defense of the king side, and Carlson's playing this very uh, queen side rather um, from re-entering. The plan is very simple: is just to play rook c2 and pick up this pawn, and basically just raid the uh, the rest of the pawns while um, white's pieces are somewhat passively placed here. So this is a critical uh, time uh, for Caruana right here. For instance, if he just plays like king, move like king c3, you know, attacking a rook and stopping this this idea, then just rook b1, it's very strong. And um, let's just play a move like rook e5, then rook c1, of course. 
so it'll be a, it's a difficult plan to uh to stop there um again if rook b1 um i'm sorry if, instead of king c3 possible is to come to to c1 and that prevents rook b1 and protects this right here Maybe I have to move like king g2, rook a6, king f3. Okay, the game still is up for grabs here. It's um, pretty drawish against these opposite colored bishops. Carolina made what I believe is a, a fantastic um, decision. I don't know if it was like a time pressure uh, related decision or he was just kind of playing the person, you know, over the board. Right, you're trying to shock. That's what's good about human chess is sometimes the moves aren't always like a correct, but you make a move, you know, based on you know psychological factors. And this seems like one of those moves right here. So here after Bishop E4, Carlson, uh, excuse me, Caruana just removes what he feels to be probably the most dangerous piece on the board, right? This centralized bishop. This move seemed to shock Magnus as after rook takes e4, d takes e4, four, he starts pushing these pawns. So the idea Carlson has is to push both of these pawns with the assistance of this bishop. And how is um, Magnus going to be able to stop both pawns? Magnus plays king g2. And now king e3, this keeps the, of course, the king from from butting in and now rook b2 so Carlson says hey I'll just pick up another piece but d5 from Caruana rook takes c2 d6 and notice the good placement of the king here it's hard to stop those pawns c3 d7 rook d2 queen and there goes the rook now all Magnus can do is try to draw here. G takes H4, G3, F6, C2, King D2, E3 check, King takes C2, E2, and Bishop A5. That protects the uh, queening square for white, and uh, Carlson was forced to resign. So let's go back. What happened? It seemed like Carlson at least right had a draw from that uh, position of not being, you know, being slightly better. So after rook takes e4, d takes e4, f5, g2, and I, I was kind of hinting that this was kind of a gamble by uh, Carolina here, this rook takes e4, but it paid off. Like I said, I'm not sure if it was a time scramble situation or he was just like relying on some type of psychological um a weakness to manifest itself for Magnus, but after King G2, King E3, the critical move here is is um, Rook B3 check, and this move is very strong because it it exploits the fact that again this bishop is way out of the game here, and the obvious uh, the continuation is after C takes B3, C takes B3. Okay, this King is not going to be able to capture this pawn on the e-file and the one on the b-file at the same time. So there's the dilemma that um, white will not be able to overcome. So for instance, king d2 to get to get this pawn, then just e3 check, and you can't stop both of them. This is why rook b3 is very strong. So rook b3 check, that leads us to this continuation, which would be king takes e4, and now rook c3 attacking this pawn, f6, rook takes c2, and notice now the rook can just easily swing over to the f-file. So d5, c3, bishop g5, guarding the uh, queening square, square, rook b2, king f5, and the idea here is to try to blockade the, uh, the f-file so that this pawn can be pushed. So rook b8, f7, c2, and now you can see that um, white 
is not able uh, to queen without black also queening. So, for instance, after c2, let's say bishop h6. So, this threatens the queen here and also stops here. The problem is, is after this uh, very strong move, rook uh, h8, uh, white is lost. There's no way he can queen here. Like, if he tries to queen, of course, you would just capture or with check. And once the bishop is, once the bishop captures on f8, then you would just queen. And let's say he just goes to uh, f4, right, with the bishop. The problem is, is you can play certain ideas, like, for instance, h4 here, or you can play this move first, king f3, followed by h4. So... I'll show you. Let's say d6. Let's say he keeps going for it. h4. You know, if you play here, then you got g3. You have to give up the bishop. And then again, this is going to queen. Um, there's real, So those are basically the two possibilities from rook b3 check. Is c takes b3 and this king takes e4. Of course, if king d2, that's just too slow. And just a move like rook f3 is uh, too much. So, for instance, f, f6, for example. Then, after king f2, this this um, pawn would just win. So, basically, after rook b3 check, Magnus... Uh, was pretty was pretty close would be pretty close to uh, to winning uh, there you know definitely has winning chances I mean it's definitely a minefield um, so for example instead of d5 in the sample variation white could play king d5 uh, king d5 I'm sorry instead and you know, things are probably probably be drawish with perfect play. But again, um, black uh, has, you know, better prospects again with two humans playing. We're not talking about two engines here. So as far as like boldness is concerned, uh, I really like this attitude uh, that uh, Carolina showed that he was willing to play a move like this because he could have definitely tried to play safe with uh, uh, King C1 here. But it's kind of like he just went for it, and it paid off. Um, Magnus wasn't able to, um, I guess, recover from, from the uh, shock of that move, we can say. And that uh, he blundered himself with Rook uh, B2, which didn't give him enough time uh, to get back. And eventually, uh, he wind up, you know, having to get, give up the uh, material. And... Um, Bishop a5 is just in time. So that move, that game was 91 moves long. So that's why we started at move 54. So that's it for uh, that video. Again, looking forward to uh, see what you think about it. Uh, let me know down below. And uh, check out the links. And uh, I'll get with you guys on the next video.